Welcome back to uh, halftime here. Phil Elson is out, so it's a Phil free uh, fun Friday. Drew Barrett, Maddie T here with you for the next hour and a half for the fun edition of Friday. Joining us now is the one and only Aaron Torres, who joins us every week. AT, before last segment, before we brought you on, I was being positive about this conference realignment and how the shakeup okay. and everything is going to be it's going to be fun because it's going to give us these incredible matchups that you know I think a lot of people have been wanting and and you know kind of hoping for but are also worried about traditional rivalries going away when it comes to you know the reshuffling uh, of conferences that we're I'm guessing going to see you know in, in the next couple days, weeks, months, years, you know, it's really hard to really pinpoint this down from a co- just a straight college football fan, especially like somebody like me who, if they get to super conferences, I don't have any skin in the game. My alma mater, it's not making a super conference. I've come to grips with that. It's, it's the best thing for a true college football Saturday. And I think that's one of the best positives that you can take out of this, right? Um, I don't. I don't know that I would agree with that. I mean, it, it is something that is, and you know, the thing with me, Drew, is one thing about me is I pivot off stuff really quickly from the perspective that once something is happening, I accept it, right? So the mm-hmm. transfer portal hits. And everybody's complaining about it. And I'm like, okay, well, I can keep complaining about this, but this is a new reality. And I'm going to talk about transfers on my podcast. And all of a sudden now the transfer portal is huge. I don't like realignment. I have accepted that it's where it's at. I'm not sure that it makes college football better, though. I'm not sure that it does. I, I, I think that there's this concept that, you know, it's it's going to create all these other big games. But here's the flip side of it. Uh, you know, somebody's got to lose these games, right? And so, mm-hmm. you know, Texas, Florida in week nine feels big on paper. Those two brands resonate. But if one of them is two and four, it inherently isn't a big game. Or I guess week nine, they would be two, you know, three and three, you know, three and four, three and five, whatever. And so, so, you know, this idea that it creates all these new big games, I don't know. And I do think college football loses a couple things. One, it loses a lot of what you talked about, the tradition, the history, the rivalries, the things that make college football, college football. And I also think that there is a, a huge segment of the, the sport that, that people, you know, schools that people love and care about that just are not in the mix. Like, you're a Memphis fan. I'm a UConn fan. And maybe not so much UConn because they're an independent. Mm. But Memphis, in theory, Cincinnati kind of proved the pathway that there is a pathway for Memphis to compete for a championship. Um, now, what is Memphis's path? And it's not only Memphis. It's not only whatever conference they're in. The Big 12 is going to be miles behind financially, uh, you know, competitively with the SEC and the Big 10. Um, the, the, the whatever is left of the ACC, if such a thing exists, uh, on and on and on. So I guess the point I'm trying to make is if you're right now an Oklahoma State fan, if you're an Oregon fan or a Washington fan and your team realistically doesn't have uh, a chance to win the title, is that good for the sport? I don't think it is. And I think the bigger question becomes, does college football lose those fans? That's something I'm worried about. Last thing, Drew, I would also say, and I do think this is something Arkansas fans have to come to grips with, is you know, it's just two more teams in the conference that you have to compete with in the pecking order. It's no different at Tennessee, Ole Miss, Missouri, whatever. What, I know I'm going long, but let me just wrap on this. When I first heard the Texas-Oklahoma rumors, of course, there was a percentage of school presidents and school ADs that needed to approve of it. Now, at a certain point, it was clear that it was going to happen. But I said if I was, a, if I was Missouri's AD, if I was Arkansas's AD, if I was Tennessee's AD, if I was Kentucky's AD, I would throw my body in front of this because it's just going to make it that much harder to win in the future. Again, we get why these decisions are made, but it doesn't mean – I don't think it's for the betterment of college football. I really don't. Mm-hmm. And I think you had a lot of valid points there, there, at. And I'm not gonna, you know, sit here and tell you you're wrong. I, I do just, you know, I just feel like even if there was a three and five Texas versus three and five Florida, I'd much rather watch that than you know a a Cal Texas, versus Kansas State. Yeah, Texas Kansas State. Well, that one might actually be interesting because Kansas State didn't they get Texas last year or two years ago? Kansas did. Or and Kansas, you know, I'll tell you this. Kansas State historically has actually played Texas really tough uh, at home. It was funny. I remember about 
seven or eight years ago, whenever Charlie Strong was there, I was writing for FoxSports.com at the time, and I was like, I said something about like, you know Texas is bad when when a slow white quarterback uh, runs all over them or something like that. And I had Kansas State fans go crazy. Like, first of all, we're four and two against them in the last six games in Manhattan, blah, 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 blah. And then they were like, you're racist. What about those racial <laughs> undertones about white people? I'm like, the guy is slow and white. What do you want me to say? I'm not going to apologize for that. So, uh, so yes, historically, Kansas State has been weirdly competitive with Texas. Um, I think even when Texas has won, it's been close. But, uh, but I, I, I do see the point you're trying to make. I, I do get what you're saying. I really do. Yeah, well... Now it just all kind of feels like who's going to be the next conference to make a move and hopefully just try to stay alive. And you, you hear different ideas being thrown out that the Big 12 is trying to snatch up some Pac-12 teams, that you know Oregon is constantly on the phone with everybody trying to figure the, all this stuff out. And the one that's interesting but kind of the weirdest to me because we've already seen the quote-unquote alliance break up from last year. This Pac-12 ACC loose partnership idea that I read about sure. earlier this week. What what are your thoughts on that? And could it could it save both conferences? The answer is no. I mean, the answer is no. And and this is something you know. Again, Arkansas thankfully is is on the right side of this whole thing. But the bottom line is. Everybody is either in the ACC or the Big Ten, or everybody is trying to get there. Mm-hmm. Now, how many teams are, are going to go? How many teams are left over? I don't know. But I find it hard to believe that Greg Sankey doesn't have a counter move in his holster. I, I find it hard to believe that if Greg Sankey makes a counter move, that, that, that Kevin Warren in the Big Ten doesn't do the same. Um, and so what I can tell you is... Um, I know for a fact there are ACC schools trying to figure out a way out of that contract that runs through 2036. Like, that's just, mm-hmm. that is happening right now, whether fans are privy to it or not. Now, I think the, the, the Pac-12, Big 12 dynamic is really interesting um, because, and really just even the Pac-12, and I talked about this on my podcast today, and, and if anybody listening cares about this kind of stuff, I encourage you to listen. It's a really interesting dynamic where everybody is trying to get everybody else to commit to something while also keeping their options open, right? So, like, Oregon, I think, and listen, Oregon, in the the setup that they have right now, where it's clear that the Big Ten doesn't want them, um, I think that they'd prefer to keep these ten teams in the Pac-12 together and, and move forward. The problem is they also want to figure out a way to keep their options open if the Big Ten ever goes beyond 16. Um I think Arizona right now, uh, which is kind of a power player sort of, especially because of basketball, uh, I think they would commit to the Pac-12 and keep the Pac-12 together if they knew that Oregon was actually committed beyond a phone call from the Big Ten. Um, But they're not, and so they may go to the Big 12. And so I just find it so interesting because nobody really wants to commit um, everybody's kind of in this space, and it's not just, by the way, it's not just the individual teams. It's like, if you're a TV network, I mean, how do you commit to anybody until you know what you're paying for? So it's just this weird limbo, and I think it's a weird game of chicken where everybody's trying to get somebody else to commit to something, to put something on paper, to put pen to contract uh, before they do anything, and nobody wants to do it, and everybody wants to leave themselves an escape clause, and I really don't know how this gets settled. Now, I have some thoughts, and I have some this, and I have some whatever, but I do think that I do just wonder, like, what what becomes of this? Because, again, nobody wants to commit to anybody else. Mm-hmm. And regardless of what the number becomes, uh, whether it's super conferences, whether, you know, SEC Big Ten stops it at 16 for a while or they get to go to 18, 20 max. Eventually, somebody that's in a power five conference right now is going to get left out. I just don't see the numbers working out where everybody that has a seat at the table right now keeps that seat at the table. If you had to pick one of the schools, and I, I'm guessing it'd have to be a school from the Big 12 or the Pac-12 right now, who is in the most danger of being on the outside looking in when all of the dust of realignment settles? Wow. We're going to talk about the most boring college football programs mm-hmm. in America uh, I think Washington State's in really bad shape. I think Oregon State is in really bad shape. And I think Cal is in really bad shape. Um, I can tell you that I have it on pretty good authority 
that folks at Stanford believe that if Notre Dame eventually goes to the Big Ten, obviously that would give the Big Ten 17 teams. Stanford thinks they will be team number 18. They don't think the Big Ten is going to sit at 16. They're going to, they would at least take an 18th team. Now, whether it goes to 1920, I don't know that part. Um, and that's where maybe Oregon, Washington gets in. It feels as though the four kind of Southwest, you know, Utah, Colorado, Arizona, Arizona State schools seem to be sticking together. But Oregon State and Washington State, if, if, if those, you know, there just might not be a seat at the table, right? And, and I think Cal's probably in that mix as well, where um, if you have a situation where, say, those four schools that I just mentioned, Arizona, Arizona State, Colorado, Utah, go to the Big 12, that might force the, the Oregon and Washington to go there as well. And that leaves, obviously, four schools on the outside looking in. I think Stanford could probably survive as an independent for a few years, uh, but I do think it would probably put, put Washington State and Oregon State in a situation where they probably have to go to the Mountain West, to be perfectly honest. Mm -hmm. Last thing, A.T., when do we hear something from Notre Dame? Are the moves that we're seeing right now going to finally force their hand and push them fully into a conference? It's a great, great, great question. And I I don't think there's an easy answer because I think there's some – like I think Notre Dame kind of understands – that they have sort of a responsibility to the rest of college football because, again, like we said, if if they go to the Big Ten, then it means probably at minimum one more Pac-12 team is going and maybe more than that. So I, I've heard differing things. I've heard that, that they feel like they have an obligation if they're seriously considering this to make a decision pretty soon. Um, by the way, it could also be countered by – if the SEC somehow gets some of those ACC schools to join them, that could force Notre Dame's hand. But I would also say kind of the flip side is true as well, is that their contract with NBC does not run out until 2025, I believe. Mm -hmm. And so for them, there's no reason to really rush this process. I mean, now I do think if they want to remain independent, whether it is NBC or whether it is another network, somebody's going to have to pay an arm and a leg to get them because, you know, we know the number $75, $80 million per school right now in the Big Ten. Um, and I don't, you know, and I don't think ESPN or Fox is going to pay for Notre Dame as an independent. They want them to join their conference. So um, I, I just think that they do still have time to go to the negotiating table. Uh, their contract is woefully, they don't get paid very much at all, which is kind of crazy. $15 million sounded like a lot 10, 12 years ago. It's not very much in this modern era. So I don't think they have to rush, but I think they also, I, I, that, that, I, I'm ducking the question. Um, <laughs> I'm ducking the question. I apologize, Drew. I, I, I would suspect, I, I don't know that we get anything definitive in the next couple of weeks. I really don't, as crazy as that might sound. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll leave it there, A.T. Uh, thanks for joining us. Next week, we'll get into more of uh, previewing SEC media days and maybe some craziness that might come out of those uh, those uh, meetings and interviews and all the other stuff that will go on. Those in at Bet Online continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's Wimbledon Finals, Major League Baseball, the latest fighting news, and even next season's early NFL futures. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code BLEAV. That's BLEAV to get the bonus and get into the action. Bet online where the game starts.